Mr. Stewart, thank you for your time. Okay, you're welcome. Um, let me ask you a question. After 60 years in the industry, you must have seen everything about whiskey, right? Uh, and you learned it from the very beginning, uh, through all the stages. Is there something that still amazes you about whiskey? Something that you consider to be a secret of whiskey? Okay, that's a good question to start with, right? And <laughs> when you were there, the, the flavors that, that okay. evolved with great time. I well, think, right? but, 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 yeah, it could be that. It could be that. Yeah, it could be up with the flavors. You know, I mean, I've seen whiskey that we distilled way back in the mm. 30s and 40s when I started back in 1962. That very few people have actually seen, and uh, you know, well, very was slightly petered back in you know, some of these 30, 40, 50, mm. 50s whiskies. Into the into the sixties, even whiskies, so, and, and just uh, just how whiskey evolves as it ages. Really, can we do a lot of nosing and and you know, looking at whiskey at uh, twelve, you know, at 21, 30, 40, mm. 50, and, and of course sixty year olds. So, so just uh, yeah, so just having that long long time with one whiskey and just and just seeing how how it evolves over time, and having the chance to you know, to look at. Older, much older whiskies that no one else mm. has ever had the chance to see, and, and you know, things were bottled the way back, you know, back, you know, 20, 30 years ago. That, that cast 191, for example, yeah. it was slightly smoky, but about a 50 year old mm. bottle back in a 1952 cask, and you know, and we did, you know, we did a, 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 a bit older Glen Fiddux as well. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, you invented uh, double maturation and with that you really changed the industry. I wonder if you look at the industry now and the regulations they have, is there something you think that in your opinion could be changed to allow more innovation now or do you think that the regulations are just the right thing to keep whiskey as it is? Yeah, no, no, I think, I think the, the regulations are pretty good as they are at the moment. I know we've been allowed to use slightly more cast for cast mm. finishing more recently but I think we, we need some kind of regulation on, on what kind of casks that we are allowed like fruit woods and other kind of mm. casts and it has to be oak and, and it, you know minimum strengths and you know, you know so, yeah, so I think it's good that we've got to direct reasonably you know, you know they're quite flexible at times the, the, mm. the, the, the rules, but it, it, there has to be a, a, a dividing line at some times on that you, you, you can't do this and you can't, but you can do that. So, and and around as you say around cast finishing, there are just certain casts that you know, we just you know we're just it's great that we aren't, aren't allowed to use them to be fair mm -hmm. because then you're you know, really like fruit woods and, yeah. and adding different kind of flavors to your whiskey, you know, which you know you would be getting from these casts. That it has to be kind of. It probably has to be cast that maybe you could actually go back and say, well, whiskey, what did age? It did go into these casts way, way back, like casts that held rum, casts that held sherry, mm -hmm. and, and others, you know, just because we, we needed casts to put whiskey into, but they had held something else yeah. prior to that. So it's a bit more kind of tradition, but they have allowed a little bit more leeway more recently, and we, we have, not that we've tried. That. Yeah, if I, if I had a, if I had a quick build on that, I would say that like the the SWA um, are definitely definitely a good thing. Like take take for example our bottling the edge of Burnhead Wood. Mm -hmm. That was when we were burning at heather through the seeds in, right. in the kilning process, and we had to look back at our our friends at Highland Park Distillery in the sixties. They used to do this, and we we put together a bit of a kind of a dossier. To present to the SWA mm -hmm. to prove that this was part of the traditional aspects of Scotch whisky making in times gone yeah. by, and okay. they, as long as you can prove that it's within within what they they require, then they're very they're very amenable and know, open to that. To that. Okay. They are, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, next question. There are some distillers who have very old whiskies to, to offer to the public, and some, some don't. Is it because not every spirit uh, lends itself to aging well, or is it the, the yeah, uh, no, creation not, of not, casks? Not, yeah, I'm not sure that's the case. To be fair, I think most whiskies, you know, most single malts will generally age on to quite an age. You know, we're just mm. very fortunate being a family company. Where we, 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 we didn't we, we didn't need to use that whiskey we, we, we just leave, leave it aging on 
and the way we try and use the, the right age for each different expression so we're always holding back stock to create a, a 15 or an 18 mm. or a 21 and until so you go back and back and back and then you find oh we've got still got stock back way back in the 60s they you know right. what we're going to do with with that and, if, and, and when, we, when that was happening, we had no idea the demand, there would be a demand out there for 40-year-old whiskies, 50-year-old whiskies, limited cask editions like the DCS mm -hmm. Compendium, a chapter being a whole chapter, and people, people have bought five chapters of, of, the, of the Compendium. They've bought one, they've bought the five. So, so you know, so we're quite we're fortunate that there's a demand out there for aged whiskey, and, and and we've got that aged whiskey, and we're very happy to, to supply mm -hmm. it. But not all companies have got whiskey of that age, to be fair, in, in the industry. So we're very fortunate that we and our whiskey does stand that that aging process, and we can even leave these stocks a little bit longer mm -hmm. if we want to do it. Talking about aged whiskies, the sixty-year-old. Um, how many casks did you take into consideration for this one? And why did you decide for the special cask you then choose? Yeah, well, we've got a, we had a number of casks filled on the same day mm. in June 1962. Uh, and uh, they're all filled into uh, European oak hogsheads. And uh, we, 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 we took one of them to, uh, for my 50 years, one from that parcel. We took another one to the DCS. Compendium Chapter 5, mm -hmm. 1962, and it was really Kelsey who had looked at the, the, the remaining number of casts and she decided to pick this one from, from the same parcel. So they're all similar qualities. It's evolved a little bit from its 50 years to its, to its 55 years to its 60 years now, but we're, we're happy with the quality of all of them, to be fair, you know, but mm -hmm. to Kelsey just home, homed in in this particular one. Right. And, and, we, and that's what we decided to bottle on. I had a look, she showed me it, and I'm happy with it. So let's do go ahead with this one. And let's, let me ask you a final question. What did whiskey teach you as a person or working with whiskey? Mm. Oh, that's a good well, to be, I think one of the key attributes is to be patient, really. And I'm not generally a very patient person. I hate standing <laughs> queues. I'm always, you know, hurry up, hurry up. But in, in, in the Scotch whisky industry, nothing happens quickly. You know, you'd have to be patient. Uh, you know, we've, we've done a number of uh, experiments back at the d distillate stage, which we know we're going to have to wait 12, 15 years for to see uh, are we happy with it. An example is the peated whisky we, we've done, and, and even when you're doing cast finishes, you, 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 they can take 18 months, two years, and some don't work. Uh, and, and and the other important point is if we even if we bring in a half a dozen barrels of Madeira cask or a, or a Pinot cask, we've got to know that if this does work, can we get a hundred mm -hmm. of these casks the next time? So, because we want to bottle it. So, there's, so it's generally just being patient uh, and uh, just, uh, you, know, take, you know, I've been learned, I've obviously learned over six years to be patient in the industry, be patient with whiskey and just to let things happen gradually. And, and that, that seems to have worked out. Yep. Uh, well, <laughs> well, Mr. Stewart, thank you for your time. Okay, no, you're welcome. Thank you for, for coming today.